That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. We have not done this in way too long, but we are going to dive into to some real dynasty fantasy football trades that happen after the NFL draft. So a lot of these are going to include rookie picks. A lot of these are going to include players that lost out on some value, but I'm excited to dive into this. We have, I want to say like six or seven trades here. So let's keep this intro brief and please drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel. If you play dynasty fantasy football, leave a comment with any trade you have made since the NFL draft, please no trades before the NFL draft only after the NFL draft trades in the comment section. And I'm going to try to reply to as many of those as I possibly can. And yeah, that should be it. Let's go ahead and let's dive into this and let's bring up our first trade here, which involves the 108 and Clyde Edwards Alaire. Now I will say with CEH, I think from a redraft perspective, he's actually slightly exciting. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but from a dynasty fantasy football perspective, this is a running back that simply has proven time and time again to not have the talent to have a long-term job in the NFL that equals fantasy production. That's going to give him a large enough role where he will be able to fall into fantasy points in 2022, 2023, and 2024. And maybe he can do it this season, but that's because of the situation. But with that 108 pick, we actually got information that this was Jamison Williams. And if you're asking me who has a career three years from now in the NFL, it's Jamison Williams every day of the week, an elite level wide receiver prospect. Now, elite's probably a, a poor choice of words. He's not up there with London, Wilson, or Traylon Burks, but he's still a fantastic wide receiver option. And this is a wide receiver that you can easily see gain on value going into year two. I want to be viewing a lot of trades at this time of the season saying, okay, what's most likely to happen this upcoming year? And how would that player's dynasty value react? Can we project them to gain value going into next offseason? Can we project this player to lose value going into next offseason? And let's say that here with Jamison Williams, he comes out and He's a wide receiver three this upcoming year. I, I mean, nothing special, but he's able to go and he's able to put up a season that's very similar to someone like Darnell Mooney last year. I mean, think about Darnell Mooney's dynasty value. I will say Darnell Mooney, he was a wide receiver three. If you look at a per game basis, I know nobody wants to believe it, but if Jamison Williams were to put up a similar type season, and then all of a sudden we are in a situation with the Detroit Lions next off season that they're able to invest into the quarterback position and get an upgrade, you know how the dynasty fantasy football community will react based on his age, based on the profile he had coming in. People will all of a sudden be willing to move Jamison Williams up to being a top three dynasty startup pick. So based on that alone, I'm going to be fine going out of our way and buying into Jamison Williams. And even if he were to fail, I would say that his value at this point is significantly more insulated than what you would find with someone like Clyde edwards -Alaire. Let Let's transition over to Clyde edwards -Alaire here and talk about the range of outcomes with himself. And I will say, if you go over to Underdog Fantasy right now, you are going to see that Clyde edwards -Alaire is being drafted as a running back three. And don't be surprised from a redraft perspective, when I end up with a lot of Clyde edwards Lair, if you're watching those live streams on Underdog Fantasy on our other channel, you are going to see me drafting a decent amount of Clyde edwards Lair, And this is because for this upcoming season in particular, I am going to continue to try to identify running back backfields that the situation's murky. We don't exactly know what's going to happen. We don't know how the touches are going to be broken down. But we know that they are going to be playing in one of the league's best offenses. This is how last year you got the discount on Leonard Fournette. You didn't know if it was going to be Rojo or Leonard Fournette, but Leonard Fournette had access to the elite level ceiling based on the offense he was playing in. And same thing with the Arizona Cardinals. You didn't know if it was going to be Chase Edmonds. You didn't know if it was going to be James Conner, but James Conner had access to an elite level ceiling based on that Arizona Cardinals offense. So from a 2022 Redraft perspective, I am fine going out of our way in drafting Clyde edwards Lair when his ADP has him as a running back three, thinking, hell, yeah, easily it can be Ronald Jones. Easily, both these running backs can fail, but based on the ceiling of the offense, I'm going to be willing to buy into this player. And of course, if you want to go draft 2022 leagues, go sign up for Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code FLOCK when you sign up, and you will get our 2022 Dynasty Rookie Draft Guide. You will get a 100% deposit match up to $100. You'll get our Dynasty rankings, our rookie rankings. You can get into drafts 
with us on the live stream. You can go get in drafts on the public lobby. Find the link in the description. But if we transition over and talk about Clyde edwards from a dynasty perspective, this is a running back that what happens if he comes out and he posts a low-end running back two season this upcoming year, which would be good for Clyde edwards The dynasty community is already so far off of him that a season like that is not going to do anything to increase his long-term dynasty value starting next offseason. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, if Clyde Edwards-Alaire were to come out and just straight up fail, if he's a running back four, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, talk about a player that his value would fall through the roof. It would be like Sony Michelle failing in 2019 and all of a sudden being a player barely drafted in dynasty drafts. So based on the range of outcomes with what their dynasty value could be next off season, I'm taking James Williams over Clyde Edwards Lair 10 times out of 10. And I know this is probably way too easy of an example. I know we probably should not have spent as much time on this, but I wanted to kind of give you an insight on how I'm viewing dynasty trades and how I'm trying to determine these players value. And now our next trade is going to be a Hollywood Brown one. You know, I am a Hollywood Brown fan. You know that I am going out there and aggressively targeting Hollywood. At least I was at the beginning of this offseason. We'll see where his value ends up because he was a wide receiver one when Lamar Jackson was healthy last year. Because in back-to-back seasons now, Hollywood Brown has accounted for close to 25% of the team's target share in Baltimore. And now he's getting that quarterback upgrade. I liked him as a buy low beforehand. Now I will say, as soon as I saw someone trade the 104 for Hollywood Brown. I was like, oh my God, that top five pick, you know, with that top five pick, you're getting a Drake London, you're getting a Garrett Wilson, you're getting a Traylon Burks, you're getting a Kenneth Walker. You are getting one of those top five prospects in this year's draft. And they get back the 108. And in my mind, I hear the 108. I go, okay, like Sky Moore here. I think this is a fair trade, but we have clarity on what actually ended up happening in this rookie draft. And at the 104, Drake London fell. Y'all know I I love me some Drake London. I I personally have him as the wide receiver one in this class, but this is a lesson to know your league, to know what your league mates are going to do. Know if you're playing in a league where people are rationally going to push the running backs up. Know if all of a sudden people are going to be taking James Cook, Rashad White, and these players that don't belong in the first round. Because the side that got Hollywood Brown managed to get Traylon Burks at the 108. So if you're plugging in the names, Drake London and Traylon Burks, it is a no-brainer. It's not even remotely close. Now, yes, like I've said, I mean, yes, I have Drake London wide receiver one. I have Traylon Burks wide receiver three in this class. But the gap is right there. I'm I'm not going to really fault anybody for winning Traylon Burks over Drake London. So the fact that you're getting Hollywood Brown on top of this, it's a no brainer. We're clearly preferring Hollywood. Let's move to our next deal. And this is going to be another fantastic trade. And this is why I was saying, please don't be selling your 2022 picks right away at the beginning of the off season, because you know, when you're on the clock, there is going to be a decent chance that you can sell them at a higher point when people have a better understanding of this overall rookie class. And here, Andrew was sitting on the clock and at the 110, Sky Moore fell. You're sitting there with Sky Moore. Obviously, everybody very excited about Sky Moore lands in one of the best spots possible, checks every single box as a prospect, but he's able to leverage Sky Moore falling to the 110. And instead of just straight up drafting Sky Moore, he's able to pivot off and trade Dallas Goddard, the 110 and a future third to bring back TJ Hawkinson, a 2023 first and a 2023 second. So if we're looking at the gap between Hawkinson and Goddard, uh, it's way more than the gap between that second and third round selection. I mean, I could be so damn excited sitting here and talking about TJ Hawkinson for about 20 minutes and that this is a tight end that's been criminally undervalued based on his production through the past two seasons in a piss poor offense. And at the same time, incredibly young and elite level prospect. I love me some Hawkinson at the very beginning of the offseason. We ranked him at tight end three ahead of guys like George Kittle, ahead of someone like Darren Waller. People wanted to give us crap for it. We ranked him over Kelsey. But I think most people are coming around to TJ Hawkinson tight end three. Now, if we're pivoting off of Sky Moore to that 2023 first round pick, I like it. Specifically, if this is a super flex format, now I'm assuming it's super flex because in a one quarterback league, Sky Moore would never fall to the 110. So in that super flex format, I don't want to say it's guaranteed, 
but it is very, very, very likely that you are getting an upgrade from Sky Moore with whoever you select in the first round next year. So this is just a good example of while you're on the clock in your rookie draft, going out there, seeing the value that you can get, because sometimes it's going to surprise you. And now our next one that we are going to pull up is going to be another example of trading back when you're on the clock. Here, you have someone at the 106 that is looking at Jamison Williams. Now, at 106, you can go Chris Olave. There are a couple different ways you can take this. But instead, they look to trade the selection for a 2023 first, and they get another player added in. I'm going to be very brief with this because there's really no analysis. This is just about the easiest trade ever. A trade, the 106 for Chris Godwin in a 2023 first. There's not much to say. Great trade. I want to reiterate, this is why you don't trade your rookie picks at the very beginning of the offseason because they are stable assets and on the clock. A lot of times you're able to pivot off them and you're able to go ahead and get whatever you really want to turn them into. This is something we talk about all the time and trading for a 2023 first as well. I am so damn sorry. Someone in the live chat a while ago, I think it was on a locals live stream. They said this and I told them I was going to steal it and I do not remember their name to give them credit, but I a hundred percent stole this from someone in our YouTube chat. So someone, a part of the flock, I apologize for not giving you your due credit. But you know how I always talk about, I've talked about for years that having a rookie draft pick is like having a US dollar. You can go anywhere. You can legitimately go anywhere and you're able to take that dollar and turn it into exactly what you want because everybody will trade for a draft pick. Whereas players, it's going to be significantly harder to go out of your way and for you to ship them to a certain team because only few owners in your league are going to say, okay, well, yeah, Leonard Fournette, I'm a contender. I need a running back and I like Fournette. You need to check a couple boxes there. And they said, well, Mason, if you're comparing a draft pick to the US dollar, wouldn't a player be best compared to a gift card? I, I love that analysis. So continuing to stack up those 2023 first round picks, it's also going to allow you to have that flexibility later on where you have the dollar instead of just the gift card where with Jamison Williams, you may not necessarily be able to go ahead and trade them for exactly what you want. But if you have that 2023 first and then the added on Godwin as well, you easily can. Now let's go to our next deal. And this is a close trade. I am probably going to stick it with the 2023 first as well, but someone traded the 108, a 2023 first, and a 2023 second for the 101. Now, you know I am one of the biggest fans ever of Brees Hall. I love me some Brees Hall. I'm expecting him to be a top five dynasty running back. We said that the day after the NFL Combine, when he was like the running back 21 in dynasty league ADP. I am all about Brees Hall. But if we're moving back to about the 108, let's think about the players that are going to be at the 108. I've seen Chris Olave fall there. I've seen people go Christian Watson. I've seen people go Sky Moore. I've seen people go Jameson Williams over Chris Olave. There's a chance that you're able to get Olave. And on top of this, if you get that flexibility with that 2023 first, with that 2023 second, we've already covered in a couple of these other deals the value of that rookie pick, the value that you're able to go through and trade that pick for almost anything you want. So I will say, I think it's fair value. Like if you ask me, Mason, do you want Brees Hall, a top five dynasty running back that checks every single box? Or do you want Chris Olave in a future first? I think it's fair value. And if you are desperate for a running back and it's August, I could easily see going ahead and taking Brees Hall there. But when we still have the entire summer to go, I mean, you know that everybody talks about like, oh, the Major League Baseball, it's the grind during the summer. Uh, you just have to get through. That's how the dynasty offseason is. I mean, in the dynasty offseason, the first half of the year, you got the NFL combine, you have free agency, you have the NFL draft, you have a lot going on. Well, once we get to the summer, it's really nothing. There's really nothing at all. And people are going to get antsy. People are going to want to trade. So you love the 2023 class. You love the fact that you're continuing to stack assets that you can look to flip later on. So if we're making this trade at the beginning of May, yeah, I'm probably going to go ahead and I'm probably just going to be trading and stacking up those future first and potentially getting a better deal for that same pick literally two months from now before we even submit a starting lineup. Now let's go to our next trade. This is the exact opposite. This is cashing in on your rookie picks. This is going and getting some veterans. Here you receive Brandon Ayuk and Najee Harris. Traded away Tim Patrick, 
I don't want to speak negatively on Tim Patrick. Great NFL wide receiver. Doesn't really mean anything for fantasy. You get back Chase Edmonds. We were talking about going and getting Chase Edmonds before the NFL draft because he had one of the safest jobs in the NFL and you could pay absolutely nothing for him. But still, it's not like Edmonds is some foundational piece. Trade away Antonio Gibson, the 108 and a future second round pick. Now, I think we can break this down a couple different ways. So if you look at that 108, it's going to be someone like Sky Moore. And I will say, if someone were to prefer Sky Moore over Brandon Ayuk, I am not going to argue in the slightest. I think they are in the same tier. The majority of people watching this video probably prefer the 108 over Ayuk. I don't necessarily think there's a massive difference between those two assets, though. And if we we're looking at Najee Harris compared to these other pieces, I'm worried about Antonio Gibson. We'll, we'll talk about this a little more in depth later on. But to see Washington go out of their way and draft a running back in Brian Robinson at the end of the third round. Antonio Gibson is a much better prospect than in Brian Robinson. Antonio Gibson's a much better running back than Brian Robinson. But to make that acquisition after going out of your way and re-signing J.D. McKissick this offseason, it tells us that this coaching staff that wasn't there when Antonio Gibson was drafted may not have complete confidence in Gibson. Whereas we know with Najee Harris, this is a bell cow running back playing every single down in a much better offensive environment as well. So if you're asking me, Mason, who do you prefer? The basket of players in Antonio Gibson, Chase Edmonds, Tim Patrick in a future second, or Najee Harris? Based on the actions that we have seen from that Washington coaching staff, from that Washington front office, I'm probably going ahead and taking Najee Harris over that entire package. And keep in mind, I mean, I loved me some Antonio Gibson in 2020. I, I truly did. But it's Najee Harris. Najee Harris is one of the highest floors you're ever going to find at the running back position when that volume is pretty much guaranteed. Now, going into this next trade, I think this one is fair. Maybe I'm just getting rookie hype. Maybe I am overthinking this. I'm probably going to end up going with the picks, however. This is the 105, the 107, and a future first for Christian McCaffrey, Dalton Schultz, and Chuba Hubbard. Now, I'll say real quick, I've seen like people drafting Chuba Hubbard on Underdog Fantasy. I've seen people trading for Chuba Hubbard like this. I've seen Chuba Hubbard in Dynasty drafts go over Dante Foreman. Please, let this sink in. I, I liked Hubbard last year. We made the mistake. We were drafting running backs late in like the third, fourth round last season before we got through our Dynasty research book. Now we know that's a very bad mistake. But he's not the second running back in Carolina. He is legitimately a player that has no value whatsoever. Donta Foreman, based on that contract, is the second running back in Carolina. So you're getting CMC, Dalton Schultz for those three picks. And if we look at the 105, who's going to be there? It's most likely going to be Kenneth Walker. And if you ask me, Mason, who do you prefer? Kenneth Walker in the 107 or Christian McCaffrey? Obviously, if you're a true contender, you're probably going CMC, but right back to what we were discussing in the very beginning of the video, if we just walk through the range of outcomes and what could happen with these players and their dynasty value next offseason, if Christian McCaffrey gets injured again, where is he going in dynasty drafts? If Christian McCaffrey gets injured again and he just misses half the year, he misses half the year, the other half of the year, he's a running back one. He's not worth a first round pick next offseason. I, I'm not saying that he shouldn't be worth. I'm just letting you know what's going to happen. I'm letting you know how the dynasty fantasy football community will react. Whereas if Kenneth Walker goes out there and Kenneth Walker has a decent rookie year, if he flashes, you have seen time and time again, look at Javante Williams is the perfect example. If a rookie running back shows absolutely anything at all, the dynasty fantasy football community will pour in on that player and that player will have a meteoric rise in dynasty value. So there's that outside chance that a player like Kenneth Walker, a player like Traylon Burks, that they fall to the 105. I'm not saying it's a guarantee that they have more value than McCaffrey next year. Of course, I'm not even saying it's likely, but I just want to acknowledge the fact that it's a possibility. And if it's a possibility and you're getting the 107 on top of it, it's something that I would at least say is fair value. And if I'm a rebuilding team, I'm taking the picks. If I'm a contending team, I'm probably taking CMC. But if we're able to say it's fair value and we're able to remove those assets out of this deal, we're looking at a 2023 first or Dalton Schultz, 
give me the pick every single time. I, I mean, with Dalton Schultz, maybe I'm a little bit too low on him, but I think that this is not going to be the number one offense in the NFL again this upcoming season. They go out there or they invest into the wide receiver position with Jalen Tolbert. I, I think we're probably just going to end up going with the future first. Now, let's go to our last trade. This is going to be another Antonio Gibson trade. Y'all know we were just talking about Antonio Gibson being a running back that we have to lower down rankings based on the NFL draft. You have to be less excited about him. This is a ridiculous trade. Here you trade away the 102 and you get back Antonio Gibson and the 105. At the 102, I have Drake London. At the 105, I have Kenneth Walker. There is not a large enough gap between those two players to go ahead and throw Antonio Gibson into the deal. It's Antonio Gibson here. Not even close. I I wanted to include this because, yes, I'm talking crap on Antonio Gibson. And if his value is this low, hell, maybe he's a buy low. But I think in the majority of leagues, you're not necessarily going to be able to get Antonio Gibson for that price. Now, of course, thank you so much for being a part of the flock and supporting the channel. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you got something from it. And if you have not done so already, go down there, drop a like, subscribe, and most importantly, use promo code flock on underdog fantasy to support this show, get our dynasty rankings, get our rookie rankings, get our 2022 dynasty rookie draft guide and draft with us. And I think that should be it. And I hope you have a great day.